Hi, this is your host, Dr. Rajesh Khanna, MD, coming to you with a new episode of The Hangout with Laser Man. Today, we are going to discuss somebody who was 47 years old and came with thin corneas. What I'm showing you today is a pachymetry distribution map that shows us the different areas of the cornea and its thickness or thinness in this case. I want you to look at this area uh, where it's more thin. Normally, cornea should be around 520 microns to 600 microns. If they're more than 600 microns, they're considered very thick. And less than, uh, than 500 microns, they're considered thin. Uh, the standard uh, care is, hey, we can do LASIK above 500 and some people would go down to 475 microns. Thinner than that it becomes very controversial and there are better options available. So here, if you look in both the eyes, it is like around 465 microns. So in a 47 year old with thin corneas, what are our options? We will put aside LASIK because LASIK makes a flap. So whenever the flap is created or fashioned, the strength of the cornea decreases in the amount the flap is created. For example, if you have a cornea of 520 microns, and you create a thin flap at of 110 microns, then the residual cornea left even before the treatment is uh, 520 minus 110, which is 410 microns. And then when you start the ablation, that's what the cornea is going to hold the pressure within the eye. In the 90s and early 2000s, when this uh, information was not uh, well known, people were making uh, flaps with old-fashioned technology which could be anywhere between 150 to 200 microns and that's why initially we saw a lot of post lasik ectasia so our today one num number one goal is the safety and avoidance of post lasik ectasia that's why in this patient we will not offer lasik eye surgery whether it is with automated microkeratomes or with the femtosecond or laser lasik like intralase Whatever the technology, whenever a LASIK flap is made, the tensile strength of the cornea is decreased. So coming to the options, one option is superficial LASIK, which is also called epilasic or super LASIK. Super LASIK is a short form for superficial LASIK. The difference between tra um, traditional LASIK and super LASIK is, the super LASIK uses a no-cut epikeratome to push the top layer away, which is only 53 microns, and this happens to be the epithelium. That is why it is also termed epilasic. Now, this area normally does not contribute to the strength of the cornea, so it's fine to remove it. And just like a scab or a wound on the skin, it heals back. So why don't we do super LASIK on everybody? Because it takes a few days to heal, like three, four days to heal, and a few more days before the vision can uh, come to 2020 in all patients. Some patients it can come sooner, some patients can come later. But that would be the treatment of choice using eye design, automated technology, and epilasic to achieve a result. Another option could, uh, could be presbyopic implant in the eye. If the patient doesn't want to wear any glasses for the rest of their life, not even middle or reading, then prep eye or presbyopic implant uh, like uh, Restore, Technis, Symphony, or Crystallens would be options. If the patient was younger, uh, or even in this case, patients say, hey, I don't want PI, uh, but I know I, I'm not a good candidate for LASIK. I want to get a quicker recovery, and I don't mind doing another procedure in the future if ever needed. ICL could still be considered. Usually ICL is done under 45 years age because cataract development can be higher. So if this patient was like 35 years of age, ICL could be a uh, first choice. Now let me be careful in clarifying because we haven't discussed the refraction. ICL is available for powers minus three and higher. So if this was minus nine, that's a no brainer. We'd prefer ICL or even super LASIK. Because even though super LASIK is safer than LASIK, we have to remove certain amount of tissue. And if the amount of tissue removed is excessive, then again, cornea can become weak. So let's say it was minus 12. Then we would straight away do ICL even in a 47-year-old patient who does not want PI. In a 37-year-old 
minus 8, it's still my pre prefer ICL. But if it's minus 2 and patient wants some correction, then epilasic uh, would be the choice. Now you see how confusing it is getting. And that's why when people call and say, hey, what is the right procedure for me? Or what's the cost for this procedure? I know uh, I might be a candidate because my glasses are this. It's not easy to give the best answer because we need the pachymetry map distribution. We need the refraction, we need the age, and we need your outcome goals, lifestyle. So the same person, 47 year old, we can give three different recommendations even though they might have minus four refraction. So we have three people, minus four refraction, 47 year old with 460 microns. One person might say, hey, I just want to do one procedure for the rest of my life. I don't want to wear any glasses. Then we would suggest buy. But they said, hey, I want to do minimum intervention, whatever the least amount. I don't want mind wearing glasses in the future. Then epilasic would be the choice. And the third person says, I want to do the minimum, but they get the maximum fastest recovery uh, because I can't have a downtime or, or I'm going out of town or, you know, I'm in uh, active military duty or whatever reason might be, then ICL would be a choice. So the main thing is if you're in a doubt whether you're a good candidate for LASIK or not, always seek a second opinion. And if you can't get a second opinion, we are here for you. You can always email us with your pachymetry maps, topography maps, and your refraction, and we can help guide you what might be best choices for you. If you have any questions as usual, please email us or call us and let us know. Awaiting your feedback. Thank you and have a wonderful day.